in this video we're going to look at system software so there are two types of system software we got operating system and utility software so examples of an operating system we got windows 10 windows 7 windows 8 android os phones os x ios and linux for pc as well so software that manages computer hardware and provides a user, user interface that's the definition of an operating system or system software but it's mainly definition for operating system so if they ask you in the example the definition of an operating system that would be your answer software that manages computers hardware and provides user interface so a operating system has many functions and that includes providing user interface managing memory managing multitasking, managing peripherals, managing files, and managing user access rights and security. So, the way it manages files is by allowing you to name files, open files, edit files, save files, move files, and allocate files to different folders. So, it allows you to do many things with um, files. Then we've got device drivers. So, device drivers are software that allows you or allows the operating system and the hardware to communicate with each other All right then we got how it provides user security so the way it provides users um, security for the user is by user management and that means it can give different users different username accounts for example if you got a laptop your uh, parents might have a different username and password on your laptop than you. So different user uh, passwords for different people, different usernames. It can also provide firewall and antiviruses as well. And it can control access right. Okay, so operating system provides security by managing user access right, which means different users will have different um, accounts including firewalls and uh, so it can include firewalls and antivirus for protection and then it can also provide encryption software which allows the user to protect their files so other people cannot read it it can also manages memory and the way it does that is by allocating free memory space to programs that need it and programs that don't need it Will be freed up so if you if you have our game open it will be moved to the main memory but if your game is closed you've not even open opening it then obviously it's not going to be open uh, it's not going to be added to the main memory which is a ram and then it can also manage multitasking so multitasking means running multiple things at one time or more than one task at the same time now, the way multitasking work is imagine you got task A, task B, task C, task D. So task A could be a game, task B, um, Skype, task C, Zoom, and task D, um, another, uh, say, um, Discord or whatever, another application. So if the task were split like this, it would take a long time for it to complete. But the way operating system does it is by splitting all of these tasks into smaller chunks. So it will divide the CPU time between the running application and it can as because it can only process one at a time this will allow the user to be more productive and also it will share process of time between them so it will share process time which makes it more productive so you can multitask that way it also <coughs> provide peripheral management and that's done well, peripheral management is any hardware that is not directly connected to the CPU. For example, a keyboard, a mouse, even hard drive, as long as it's not connected to the CPU, it can be called a peripheral. We also got headphones and a few other things as well. It also controls external devices, which allows them to communicate with the computer. Now, we've also got user interface. Now, without user interface, you will not be able to con uh, communicate with the computer you would be communicating into ones and zeros now the definition of a user interface is is a computer design that allows the user to interact with the computer 
An example of that is GUI, graphical user interface. We also got command line or menu driven interfaces. So all of these are called user interface. Now first a GUI, that allows you to interact with the computer but in a visual way. So you've got icons, menus and so on. So all of these are examples of a GUI. So you've got windows here, icons, menus, pointers, so the mouse is moving around. So this is GUI. You're communicating with the computer using graphics. Now the advantage of GUI is that it shows you visual cues to make it easy to work out how the system is used or how the system works or how to interact with the system. But it uses a lot of memory or a lot of system resource such as memory or um, GPU. So graphical uh, graphic, graphic cut. It would also use a lot of CPU as well or a lot of CPU time. Now, another one is called command line interface, and that allows you to interact with the computer with by only typing commands. So rather than graphics, you just type commands. This is an example of a um, so CMD. So this is an example of a command line interface. So you can type things in, and then you can communicate with the computer. Now, an advantage of that is quick for experts experts who type very fast and know what they're doing um, with the command line interface will be able to open softwares faster and communicate with the computer faster. But um, it also takes less space on the disk and the RAM and it gives you more options than GUI. However, it is has a very complex learning curve. It's not easy to learn how to communicate with the computer using command line interface. Also, new users will find it very difficult to use. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's everything that you need to know about the operating system.